We did it. Oh, thank the gods. I'm sure many of you out there are just as happy as I am. And what an occasion to celebrate. Uh, we do still have some months of dealing with an orange, ridiculous toddler who has no coping skills. So everybody still be safe out there, but joy. Uh, thank you for coming back to my tiny kitchen. I am Quintana here with another recipe to share with you. And last week when I made bread for the first time, um, it was kind of fun making a first time recipe. So I thought I'd do the same thing this week with some delicious green pozole. Um, it's so delicious. I love hominy. It's a dish I grew up with. And so I'm gonna try to make a version that I found on a website called Hola Jalapeño. And it's a vegan green pozole. So let's get started. Here comes the parade of ingredients for our delicious vegan green pozole. First, we're gonna start with eight ounces or one heaping cup of dried pinto beans. And then we're gonna take one white onion and quarter it, followed by one pound of these beautiful tomatillos that have been husked and rinsed. Oh, they're so pretty. And for the first time, I'm actually following the recipe because she calls for five garlic cloves peeled and five is my favorite number and I love garlic so we're sticking with five. One quarter cup of vegetable oil that we're going to divide later. One half cup of raw pumpkin seeds. One seven ounce can of large green chilies chopped and drained. One four ounce can of diced jalapenos drained, and finally, one 25 ounce can of white hominy drained. I can't wait. And we're also going to use six cups of water or vegetable broth, uh, whichever you choose. All right, so first things first, it should be noted that you're going to start the recipe the night before you actually want to make your pozole. So you're going to rinse your pinto beans and then put them in a pot and just cover them maybe with about an inch of water and let them soak overnight. And it's a very important step and it's really easy to do. You just have to remember to do it the day before you want to make it. So these are my soaked beans that I'm now going to drain and continue on with the rest of the recipe. All right, so the beans have soaked overnight and now we have our quartered white onion, our five garlic cloves, and our one pound of tomatillos on a baking sheet. And we're gonna heat the broiler to high and put these in there and turn occasionally until they get a nice char on them. Um, but the recipe says to keep an eye on the garlic. You don't want the garlic to get charred. You want to remove the garlic when it starts to get golden brown. So got to turn on my broiler, put these in there, and keep my eye on it. Okay, so I've got my uh, veggies in the broiler. The garlic is already out, and now we've heated one tablespoon of the vegetable oil in a frying pan, and we're going to add the pumpkin seeds, and it says to just let them fry until they start to pop. So let's do that. All right, we got these sizzling poppin' pumpkin seeds that we are now going to add to the blender. Ah! Oh, lost a few soldiers, it's okay. Keep in mind, this is a one person operation. Folks, doing my best. All right, and then we're gonna season it with salt. And then we're going to wait until the veggies are done. All right, so now we have our charred veggies that we are going to add to the blender with our delicious toasted pumpkin seeds. So let's get to adding, right? Our 
veggies added, we are going to add a half cup of veggie broth. And I suggest if you ever have the choice between adding water or broth, any kind of broth, always choose broth because that's going to give you some major flavor. And now we're just going to blend it on high until it's nice and smooth. So let's go. All right, so now we have in a large pot, we have heated the remaining tablespoons of vegetable oil, it should be about three tablespoons. And now we are going to add that delicious pureed veggie mix that we just blended in the blender. Um, we're gonna add that to this and she said it might splash, splatter because the oil obviously is hot. So I'm gonna move this up a little bit. Ooh, yeah, baby. Let's get that all in there and happy. Okay, so it said we're going to stir and kind of fry this. You can see it's like bubbling and popping everywhere um, for about five minutes until it's thickened. So let's do that and I'll see ya on the flip side. because really All right, and our next step is to add the remaining five and a half cups of broth. Give a nice stir. Then the soaked and drained pinto. And stir it after every time I add something. And the chilies and jalapenos. And give this a nice stir. And what we're gonna do is we're going to bring this to a boil and then we are going to reduce the heat to a simmer and cover it and let it cook for about an hour until the beans get nice and soft. See you then. All right, I have been simmering for a little over an hour now. Look at that deliciousness. I'm gonna give it a nice stir and then I'm going to add my hominy and um, some kosher salt. So the recipe said that you could just add the hominy and then serve it immediately, but I'm gonna let it simmer for maybe about five more minutes and then we're gonna do the taste test. There we have it, folks. Uh, homemade pozole. It smells so good. I'm just going to stir it up a little bit more. Um, so it's ready to be dished out and topped with some fun toppings and tasted. And some of the toppings she recommended to use are uh, diced white onion, radish, sliced radishes, dried oregano, I'm gonna use some limes and some radishes and some, I don't have any more white onion, but I'm gonna use some shallots. It's gonna be tasty. There we have it. Beautiful vegan green pozole topped with some shallots, some shaved radish, some dried oregano, and a little squirt of lime. It is totally ready to be taste tested by our favorite taste tester, Dan. Oh, that's really delicious. Mm. It's salty and tangy and herbaceous. I, I could, I could eat a lot of this. There you have it. I'm going in for seconds. Mm -hmm. Radish makes it sing together nicely. Success. 
I'm so glad it turned out so delicious. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for coming back to my tiny kitchen. Please let me know if you try any of my recipes. I love to see it. Uh, come on back next week where I'll have another new recipe for you. Until then, don't forget to like and subscribe and tell your friends and spread the word. 